welcome to the chapter of uh, steam drum now steam drum is again the integral part of a steam generation unit or a steam distribution uh, system under the edges of a chemical process utilities now before we go into the detail of the steam drums uh, just to have a recap towards the topics which we covered previously so previously we covered the topic pertaining to the superheaters steam temperature control systems we discussed about the various types of reheaters and we discussed about the the concept of a leakage in air heaters now in this particular uh, uh, lecture we are going to cover the attemperators concept of steam drums then we will discuss about the various parts of uh, steam drums uh, let's start with the attemperators now the boiler attemperators uh, they are used to fine tune or control the steam temperature from a boiler as well as the steam temperature between the boiler stages sometimes different type of a boiler stages being used so they they are used to um, control the steam temperature now what are the desirables in the temperators one is that they must be able to control the temperature during startup shutdown sometimes turbine may get trip and sometimes turbine runs on a full load and also provide the precise temperature at all conditions uh, while with a standing with the high temperature difference and the uh, cycling now these attemperators this includes the high pressure interstage reheat interstage and final stage if you recall that we discussed the various kind of a reheaters in the the previous lecture now the attemperators they are located in steam pipe work upstream to the steam turbine now see here this is uh, the steam uh, pipe work and uh, you are uh, having this uh, attemperator so they allow very fine control of uh, final steam temperature by spraying the precise amount of water into the steam flow so again uh, this is the usual way to control the steam temperature now the steam temperature from the boiler is normally controlled slightly above the final temperature required this is uh, attributed to the various irreversibility associated with the steam piping network and this uh, the steam temperature is uh, then attemperated downward as it is easier and more effective and precise to control the final temperature with the temperation than um, with the boiler control so by this way one can maximize the efficiency because sometimes if you are producing the steam at the desired temperature and a pressure at the boiler end um and if uh, it goes to the the point of uh, use then sometimes uh, you may not have the uh, the steam with the proper temperature or a pressure so in that case uh, a slightly about Um, uh, temperature the production of steam at a slightly about temperature uh, always be desirable but in that case uh, sometimes you need to go for the precise control of the temperature in that case the temperators are very useful device so in a temperator spray reduces uh, the steam temperature in the superheaters zone of a boiler so as to maintain around say you know, 535 to 540 degrees centigrade uh, temperature at the inlet of the steam turbine similarly it is also used as the exhaust to lower the steam entry temperature to the condenser so by this way you can maximize the efficiency of the condenser now here you see that the process flow process flow diagram now here you see that the condenser is returned to the feed water tank now here this you can see that this is the feed water tank now this feed water is pumped to the boiler house you see using the boiler feed water pump this boiler feed water pump now a minimum feed water flow valve is also mounted uh, in the line to optimize the flow rate that is quite obvious 
and the feed water is first passed through the preheater economizer section. Here you see that this goes to either here this is the preheater and this is the economizer section or system. Now, the saturated uh, steam produced is then separated from the water here this is the drum and it is separated from the water in the steam drum as uh, we discussed that uh, this serves as the, the, the uh, steam separation unit and it is having the steam chest as well as the water chest. Now, this uh, separated water is then transferred to the drum outlet tank for recycling. Now, the saturated steam collected from the steam drum is then superheated to a slightly higher temperature in a primary superheater. So, you see that there are two superheaters 1 and 2. The superheated steam temperature is uh, controlled through the attemperator situated between the primary and the secondary superheater using a spray of water. So, you are supplying the spray water through this uh, spray water controlled valve. The controlled temperature superheated steam is finally superheated up to the desired temperature and pressure for the use in a high pressure turbine. The condensed low pressure steam this can again heated using the reheater here you see that this is the reheater followed by the temperature control using the secondary temperator situated between the heaters. The produced intermediate or low pressure steam is then used in uh, interme intermediate or low pressure turbines. Now, there are several problems uh, associated with uh, the temperators. One is that undesired water addition due to improper temperature operation or through the leakage from the control element. And second is that it sometimes result to the damage of hardware and piping due to the thermal shock. It can also lead to the erosion in the piping network. Another problem is associated with the temperature is that in case of interstage temperatures, sometimes they show inability to provide final steam temperature in the desirable range. So, your entire purpose may not be fulfilled. Uh, this can be caused due to the in inappropriate turn down, due to unregulated changes in the spray water flow or due to the leakage within the control system. Uh, sometimes such failure can reduce the steam cycle efficiency and output of electricity. Poor design, installation and a faulty control system, these can also be the root causes of uh, these problems. Now, let us talk about the steam drum. Now, steam drum is an integral part of uh, steam generation unit uh, because it um, it carries the two phases. One is the steam uh, or uh, vapor phase, another one is the liquid phase with respect to the water. And also it serves the, the source uh, for the separation of steam water. It also carries the steam, steam in it as well as water. So, uh, one can say that a steam drum is a, a standard feature of the boiler water pipes. It is a reservoir of water or steam at the upper end and the water at the lower end. You can see this is the steam drum. Here you see that uh, the reservoir for the water and the, here you see that uh, the reservoir for the steam. Now, this drum keeps the steam produced in the water tubes and act as a phase separator for the mixed steam or water. You see that uh, we talked about that uh, we need to separate the steam from the water. So, this is the way. The density difference between the hot and cold water, this helps in the accumulation of water or saturated steam into the steam drum. This is the, you can say the answer to the problem that how the steam is being separated from the water. 
the integral part of uh, your steam drums are enlisted over here. The mixture of steam and water entering the steam drum through the riser tubes. So, you can see these are the riser tubes through which the, the steam and the water they are entering to the drum. Internal drum consisting of a, a demister, this separates the water droplets from the steam to produce the dry steam. Now, saturated water vapors at the bottom of the drum flows down through the down comer. Now, here this is this is the down comer. Usually, they are heated for the header and water drums. Now, when we are talking about the theory of steam drums, there is a considerable difference between the density of a water and a steam at a low pressure. But as the pressure increases towards the critical point, the density difference decreases. So, steam is separated in two stages, one is the primary stage and second one is the secondary stage. Now, uh, when we talk about the primary stage, uh, primary steam water separation or a primary stage, so the primary steam water separation, this removes nearly all the steam from water, so that very little steam is recirculated from the drum bottom or through the ground comer towards the heated tubes through the outlet connection that is the down comer. Now, this process can be carried out using either the gravity driven separation, it is generally considered uneconomical and uh, its use nowadays is very, very limited. Another is the baffle assisted, you see there are several baffles over here. So, baffle assisted separations, simple screens and the baffle arrangements they are used to for improving the steam water separation process. Baffle provide among uh, other changes uh, in the direction, more even distribution of the steam water mixture as well as additional flow resistance. Now, their use is uh, mostly limited to smaller and uh, for the low capacity boilers. Third one is uh, the mechanical primary separators. Now, they, may, they make use of centrifugal force or radial acceleration. They are nowadays in use of almost worldwide for a state of art steam water separators. Conical cyclone, horizontal cyclone, vertical cyclone separators they are the sum of the, the technologies being used for the set purpose. Now, steam leaving the primary separators typically contains too much liquid in the form of droplets containing contaminants. Therefore, the secondary separation stage is also needed. Now, this is uh, you can see this particular figure, this is your secondary steam water separation system. Now, at secondary separation stage, steam is passed through a secondary stage of separator or scrubber, here you see that uh, scrubbers are there, usually they are the closely spaced corrugated parallel plates. Now, by this way, they are separating to for final water droplets removal. Now, steam is then exhausted through the various ports. So, you can see that steam is moving out from here. So, uh, there are various parts of uh, steam drums. One is uh, the feed water line, safety lines because it carries uh, the steam so and sometimes the pressurized steam so steam safety lines uh, sometimes you may require to put forward some doses uh, in the the uh, steam drums so there must be one chemical dosing lines then the continuous blow down lines or cbd this must be there so that any kind of a sludge etc because the recirculating water is there so sludge accumulation may be scaled accumulation may be there so 
uh, you must have uh, a continuous blow down line so that you can remove all those sludge scales etc uh, to improvise the efficiency because ultimately they do not have any economical value. Then the drum level gauge is again very important to assess uh, the level of water as well as a steam. Cyclone box chamber, steam purifier we have already discussed. Then saturated steam outlet pipe here and then downcomers and intermittent blow down, blow down lines. So, all these are the integral part of uh, your steam drum. Now, see uh, the safety walls uh, when um, again they are the very integral part of uh, the boiler or steam generation unit, uh, they are typically used for boiler over pressure protection. There are various devices being used to prevent the boiler damage or boiler explosion because ultimately it is a pressurized vessel, pressure vessel. So, if uh, the excessive pressure being built up because of the pressure, temperature and volume effect, then sometimes if uh, we, we do not have these type of uh, uh, safety devices, then it may be uh, dangerous for the person those who are working in and around. So, uh, they are uh, uh, the safety walls, uh, they are typically used for boiler over pressure protection and other applications like such as uh, downstream pressure redu reducing control, although their primary role is for the safety. Safety walls, they are also used in the process operation to prevent the product damage due to excess pressure. Uh, another thing is that chemical dosing lines to reduce the chances of any kind of scale formation uh, by converting in into the sludge and removal through the low point drain. So, usually the trisodium phosphate is used to react with the scale forming salts like calcium chloride, calcium sulphate, etc., and convert them into sludge. Another thing which uh, we need to address that is the continuous blow down line. Now, to keep the concentration of impurities within the specified limit, it is necessary to drain a portion of water from the drum continuously and compensate the same with fresh make what makeup water having the lower impurities so that uh, the scale formation within the system can be minimized within the side tubes and uh, the silica carryover can be prevented. Now, here you see that uh, some of the integral part of uh, continuous blow down line that is the TDS monitoring system, TDS stands for total dissolved solid, there must be a timer and heat exchanger and a detector through which you can supply the chemical dosing and chemical uh, continuous uh, blow down and you can assess that at what time you need to start the blow down. Now, normally the percentage of uh, continuous blow down um, line or CBD, uh, this will be maximum 1 percent of the steam generation. So, the continuous blow down the in percentage it can be uh, represented through this uh, mathematical representation that is the TDS that is the total dissolved solid in makeup water in parts per million that is ppm over allowed uh, TDS in boiler water in ppm and that is uh, the percentage makeup. Then we must have a drum level gauge. This is again uh, uh, you can say a very important fitting. This indicates uh, the water level inside the boiler steam drum to an observer. Now, it is some sort of a safety device upon which the correct working of the boiler depends. Now, this fitting may be seen in front of the boiler and it is mostly employed in the steam boiler. Usually, it has a strong glass tube fitted in two hollow gun metal casing like this with the help of a stuffing box. The lower end of uh, this uh, drum level gauge like this communicates with water and the upper level this 
represents the steam in the boiler. Boiler steam drum water level is one of the most important power plant parameter to both measure and control. Control of the proper water level in the boiler is critical for the safe operation of the boiler. Now there are two consequences when uh, maybe the water level in the boiler is low or high. Now if the level is too low, the boiler tubes will be damaged by overheating because it may get exposed to the, the heating lines and uh, because of uh, uh, inadequate uh, heat transfer media with respect to the water, they may start I mean overheating and uh, over the period of time when if either you introduce the uh, fresh water or sometimes it may bend because of the heat impact or expansion of the, the uh, metal and it may create a problem and sometimes it is so harmful that it to the damage and uh, the boiler may get explode, explode. Now sometimes the level is too high, so stream separators uh, will not function properly and the temperature control will be extremely difficult and the superheated tubes and turbine could be damaged by moisture or water treatment um, carryover, chemical carryover. Uh, the reason is that uh, if you notice that uh, the steam and water may get separated to the density difference. So that separation may not take place and sometimes the, the steam carryover or a water droplet carryover may cause excessively and um, sometimes you may not notice this particular problem in the boiler, but uh, you may see the impact of these uh, carryover to the point of use where you are using the steam. So that is why the proper level is quite essential. In addition, poor level control will also adversely affect the drum pressure control and that is again very important because uh, pressure aspect is again very, uh, very crucial. If you are not getting the steam at the desired pressure, in that case you may experience the problem. The sliding operating uh, pressure of modern 3 drum heat recovery steam generators along with the frequent startup and shutdown, this has added to the challenge of uh, selecting the proper mix of instruments and maintaining correct water level under all conditions. Now there is a saturated steam outlet pipe. Now the saturated steam is the steam in equilibrium with water that is uh, the steam that holds all the moisture it can hold and is still remain in vapor. So saturated steam this can be used to purge process equipment or perform other functions or it can be superheated. Now as long as uh, the steam and the water are in contact with each other the steam is in the saturated conditions because of the phase equilibrium concept. Now here you can see the water and the steam, so they, these are in equilibrium. So this is this zone will always be as a saturated zone. Now saturated steam cannot absorb additional water vapors, but boiler can continue to add heat energy to it. Now steam that continues to take up take on heat energy or get hotter is known as superheated steam. This is a usual phenomena. Now let us talk about the downcomer. The downcomers uh, they are the tubes that transfer water from the steam drum to mud drum. Now as the cool, cooler water descends from the steam drum and flows through the downcomer, it picks from the firebox and replenishes the water supply to the mud drum. Now again one important point uh, to the boiler is that the feed water, feed water supply to the boiler, uh, it is uh, you can say the heart of the boiler. The quality of water which is supplied into the boiler is extremely important 
and it must be at the corrected temperature usually say around 80 degree Celsius to avoid any kind of thermal shock to the boiler and keep it operating efficiency. The reason is that sometimes boiler operates say around 200 degree Celsius and if you supply the normal water to normal water say suppose maintain at 25 degree Celsius then there may be a chances of thermal shock because of the larger delta T. To avoid this, this the feed water temperature must be corrected properly. Also, it must be ha having a correct quality to avoid any kind of a damage to the boiler. Ordinary untreated potable water is not entirely suitable for boilers and quickly cause them to foam and scale up thereby reducing the boiler efficiency. Uh, thereby if uh, boiler is less efficient in that case uh, you may uh, face the severe economic loss and steam would become dirty and wet and sometimes it is not at all usable. So, the life of boiler would also be reduced in a similar fashion. So, the both the feed water treatment and heating takes place in the feed tank which is usually situated high above the boiler just to utilize the gravitational factor. The feed pump adds water to the boiler when it is required and heating the boiler in the feed tank also reduces the amount of dissolved oxygen in it. And obviously, we discussed a lot about this that oxygenated water is corrosive in nature. Now, this is uh, the typical feed water tank. You see there are various lines in this, there are inlet lines, heating lines, outlet lines, temperature control, safety devices, all these things are here. Now the blow down, the chemical dosing of boiler feed water, this lead to the presence of suspended solids in the boiler. The, these usually collect in the bottom of the boiler in the form of sludge and are removed by the process known as bottom blow down and this is sometimes being carried out intermittently. And sometimes it, this can be done manually by the boiler attendant who use a, usually use a key to open the blow down valve and set period of time usually twice a day, thrice a day depending upon the, the nature of sludge being formed. Other impurities remain in the boiler water after treatment in the form of dissolved solid. Now, here you see that uh, this is the blow down vessel and this is uh, the boiler you see that this is the steam chest and this is the water line and uh, this is the, the, the uh, key through which you can open the blow down line and since this particular the entire content of this boiler is maintained at a very high temperature. So, you cannot discharge all these things uh, altogether. So, um, it is discharged to this blow down vessel usually uh, uh, flashing may occur because if it is at high pressure then in that case the flashing may occur. So, excess uh, vapors can be discharged from this way and uh, there is a pressure measuring device through which you can measure the pressure and uh, thus uh, to operate the vent head and you can discharge the blow down later on. We have discussed about the water level controller in, in the previous section. This is the typical you can say the boiler level control and alarm configuration always it is cubed with the alarm. Now, this is fitted with the boiler shell and these are the protection tube because uh, the, the, the quality of the steam and the safety of uh, boiler it always depends on the accurate water level. So, we see that if uh, the, the, the level is too low, then definitely the tubes could overheat, may cause the explosion. If too high, then carryover may take place. Now, condensate in the boiler is again very crucial. Now, uh, condensate uh, uh, because whenever you are using the steam and if it condenses, then again uh, the condensate is having a substantial economic value because you have invested a lot 
for uh, water purification, water demineralization and uh, deionization. So, it carries a value. So, the recovery of this condensate is extremely important. Now, uh, when we talk about the flow of steam to the plant, so when steam condenses, its volume reduces, which results in the localized reduction in pressure. Now, this pressure drop through the system, this creates the flow of steam through the pipe. Steam quality is again very important. Now, it is important to ensure that the steam leaving the boiler is delivered to the process in the right condition. Now, to achieve this the piping work which carries the steam around the plant normally incorporates uh, the various kind of stainer, separator and steam traps. Now, the role of stainer is just because uh, over the period of time or over the period of uses of these uh, piping networks, some type, um, some debris may occur attributed to the rusting of the pipe or corrosion of the pipe. And the small metal particles, if uh, they trapped in the steam, and if you are using this steam to heat the any kind of uh, the reactant through the direct uh, steam sparging, in that case, it may be uh, very dangerous because these metal may cause uh, the catalytic uh, uh, reaction and uh, thermal runaway reaction or catalytic runaway reaction may take place. So that's why there are stainers um, in line. Between uh, uh, in the line of uh, steam, those who captures the the various kind of a debris, etc. Now, when steam from the distribution system enters to the steam using the equipment, the steam will again give up energy, either by warming up uh, the equipment or continuing to the transfer heat to the process. So, as the steam loses heat, it turns back into the water that is the condensate. Inevitably, the steam begins to do this as soon as it leaves the boiler. So, the temperature at the, the start is very high and the pressure is supporting it. So, probably it may not be possible at the end exit level of boiler, but later on it is a common phenomenon. Now, condensate removal, once the condensate is formed, condensate removal is again very important. So, the condensate must be removed from the lowest point in the distribution piping network for variety of reasons, because this condensate does not transmit heat effectively. A film of condensate inside plant will reduce the efficiency with which the heat is transferred. Now, when air is dissolved into condensate, it becomes corrosive and inadequate drainage this may lead to the leaking joints. So, uh, in this particular uh, lecture, we discussed about the various aspects of uh, uh, steam drums, integral part of the, the steam chest, integral part of the, uh, the drum with respect to the water level controller and other thing. We discussed about the importance of a condensate and uh, how these condensate are formed and what is the importance of these condensate especially in terms of the removal of these condensates. And if you wish to have a further uh, uh, reading, then you can uh, take the help of these references. Thank you very much.